Hello and welcome to Learn A Level Biology for free with Ms. Estrick. Today we're going to be going over the protein structure, which is part of the biological molecules unit in A Level Biology. There are going to be quite a few questions where if this is revision that you're watching it for, you can pause and have a go. If it's the first time you're learning about the proteins, then you can pause and add notes. So we're going to start with a question um, linking to what you might have learned at GCSE. So what are proteins made up of? So amino acids, those are the monomers which proteins contain. If you've already learned this, then pause the video and see if you can remember how to draw the general structure at this stage. If you haven't already learned it, here's the structure. So we have a central carbon with four different groups coming off. So we're going to split it into those four to help you remember. So over here we have the amino group, sometimes called the amine group. So we've got a nitrogen and two hydrogens. We also have a carboxyl group, C double bond O, and then a hydroxyl group. The R group, what this indicates is the variable group. So there's 20 different options of what could be at this point on the carbon. You do not need to know those 20 different options. So instead you just have to write the letter R, which indicates that's the section which is different for all 20 amino acids. The final part is a hydrogen. So just remember when you're trying to um, draw your amino acids, central carbon, which makes four bonds, and these are your four different groups. So next question then, we have two general amino acids here. Pause the video and link it to what you've already learned so far in monomers and polymers. See if you can come up with the name of the reaction for how these might join together to form a dipeptide. So here we have it. It would be a condensation reaction. So that is when you join two monomers together, creating a bond, and water is eliminated. And this is where the water would come from. So you have the hydroxyl from the carboxyl group and the hydrogen from the amine group. And you do actually need to know the location of where the water is removed from. The bond that is made is called a peptide bond. And here we have it. The peptide bond um, is what would form when we remove the water. So carrying on then with the proteins as polymers. That's the first thing, just to be aware, if you are asked what is a protein, it is a polymer, and the monomers that they're made up of are amino acids. So that's what I'm demonstrating in this diagram here. Each different colour circle is a different amino acid. There's 20 different amino acids, um, and you have a different sequence of the different 20 in each protein. There's four different levels of structure that proteins have. So when they're first made, you have this primary structure. That's processed to make the secondary. That gets processed further to make a tertiary or quaternary structure. So we're going to go through exactly what's happening in these different levels of development. But just pause at this stage to have a look at the diagrams to see, just based on the images, can you describe the differences that you see? Okay, primary structure first. Now this would be a one mark question describing what the primary structure is. And it is the order of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. So this here is a polypeptide chain. A polypeptide chain is a um, chain of amino acids all joined together by several condensation reactions. The peptide bond holds each amino acid together in the chain. The key part of this definition would be pointing out the order or the sequence because every protein has a different sequence of amino acids. And we're going to come back to why that is so important. Secondary structure. So that polypeptide chain gets processed and it either gets twisted to make this alpha helix or it can be bent and folded to make what we call a beta pleated sheet. So that would be your first mark in describing what the secondary structure of a protein is, the second stage in processing. 
Um, so we've got an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. Now those structures are held in place by hydrogen bonds. So I've just demonstrated here with these pink dashed lines, the hydrogen bonds, which would be holding together the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. But again, you need to know the location of these bonds. So the hydrogen bonds form between the C double bond O, and specifically it is the oxygen um, of that molecule in the carboxyl group, and one of the um, hydrogens in the amino group. So that's what I've demonstrated down here. So hydrogen bonds form between oxygen and hydrogen, and it's from the hydrogen in the um, amine or amino group, and the oxygen in the C double bond O part of the carboxylic acid. And you'd have several hydrogen bonds forming, and that's what provides the strength to hold the protein in its alpha helix and beta pleated sheet. Tertiary structure. So this is now a three mark definition. The three key marks are the protein gets further folded. So the secondary structure is then folded in on itself. In doing that, you create this unique 3D shape. And finally, it's for pointing out what is holding that 3D shape in position. And there's even more bonds. So the ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds, and disulfide bonds. That would be your three mark definition of what the tertiary structure of a protein is. But just to point out, um, you again, again, you need to know the location of the bonds. This time it forms between the R groups. So the ionic and disulfide bonds are located between different um, amino acids, but it's between their R groups. And a disulfide bond, di means two. So it's a bond that forms between two different sulfurs. So you would only get a disulfide bond if you happen to have amino acids within the polypeptide chain, which have a sulfur in their R groups. The last level of organization or structure is a quaternary structure. And this time it's still a unique 3D shape, but you have more than one polypeptide chain. So I've indicated this by giving them different colors. So we've got a polypeptide chain folded up, which is yellow, purpley pink, blue, and green. An example of this would be hemoglobin, because hemoglobin is made up of four polypeptide chains. So thinking about our tertiary structure, that's going to become really important when you learn about the function of particular proteins. So for example, enzymes. And at GCSC, you learned about the idea of proteins and enzymes denaturing. What that means is the bonds that are in the tertiary structure, which hold it in that unique 3D shape, are broken. In particular, the ionic and hydrogen bonds break. And if they break, that unique 3D shape collapses and it'll start to go back to the secondary structure, which we can see here. The sorts of conditions that would break those bonds would be if you had too high a temperature, because excess kinetic energy can cause those bonds to break, or if you have too acidic or too alkaline conditions, because acidic conditions is an excess of H+, alkaline is an excess of OH-, and that will give an imbalance in charge, which can again break those bonds. Now we said when we looked at the primary structure that the sequence of amino acids was the key importance in the definition. So the reason for that is the exact sequence of amino acids is what determines where the ionic, hydrogen and disulfide bonds form in a tertiary structure. And where those bonds form determines the unique 3D shape. So if you did have a different sequence, these three bonds would form in different locations and you would end up with a different 3D shape. And if the 3D shape of a protein changes, it will no longer function or it will have a different function. So if we use enzymes as one example, if one of the amino acids coded for is different in the sequence, the bonds are in a different location, different 3D shape, that means the active site will be a different shape and no longer complementary to the substrate. If it was um, to do with 
the carrier proteins embedded within the cell surface membrane, if those were now a different shape, whatever it is that they bind with to transport across the membrane would no longer be complementary and it wouldn't be able to transport across membranes. So linking to all of this, I'm just going to throw in a question which will become relevant later on in the A-level as well. What might cause a change in the amino acid sequence? So why might you get one of these amino acids incorrectly coded for? So the answer would be mutations. So if there was a change in the DNA, a mutation, that change in DNA sequence might then code for a different amino acid and therefore primary structure changes. So that's it for the protein structure. You need to know that the proteins are polymers made up of amino acids. You need to know the details about the primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structures. Whenever you have a question about proteins, make sure you are referring to the bonds in the different levels of structure and the location of those bonds because the bonds are what determine the shape the shape is what determines the function so that's it for learn a level biology with Ms. Estrick for free if you want to go back and look at one of the other biological molecules i'll add the links for you to click on or the biochemical tests video so you can see how to test for a protein